Member for North Shore. Mr. Speaker, my question is directed to the Minister for Energy and Environment. Can the Minister update the House on the, how the reuse and recycling of plastic bags can help, the, help protect the environment? Minister. Oh, Mr. Speaker, I thought I'd never get the chance. I thought I'd never get the chance. One thing we know, Mr. Speaker, is there's no such thing as single use plastic bags in the Labor Party, Mr. Speaker. No such thing as single use plastic bags in the Labor Party, Mr. Speaker. Member for hey, The fishers are meant to jump onto the hook in this place. It's with regards to the use of props, Mr. Speaker, in convention of the House. Minister, Minister will continue without the use of Don't worry, Member for Thank Cessnock. You. I got yeah. it out of the way early. But, Mr. Speaker, what a great question from a great member. And can I just say, she's probably the hardest working member in the parliament. Outstanding work, and no one is more committed to the environment than the member for North Shore, and I want to thank you for that commitment. Just like all of us on this side of the House, Mr. Speaker, which is exactly why we're going to take responsible and decisive action to tackle the issue of climate change, which is why we're also going to expand the footprint of our national parks network. And Mr. Speaker, Mr. And I know the member for Borkham Hills, the Green member for Borkham Hills, is very excited about this, and I can't wait to make a big announcement with the member for Borkham Hills. But Mr Speaker, we're not only going to do that, we're also about protecting our threatened and endangered species. Just look at our Saving Our Species program in New South Wales, a $100 million program to protect the, uh, to protect the bilby, to protect the coral. And the, to, to, the member for Monero wants some things protected, but they're not my Saving Our Species. They're actually... <laughs> They actually don't need any protection, in fact. But, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, what I'd, what I'd also say is they're not the only things we're going to do to protect the environment, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, that's why we're going to tackle the issue of plastics in New South Wales, Mr. Speaker. We know that plastics are having a detrimental impact on our environment. In fact, a devastating impact in our marine life. And I know the member for Hawkesbury is very concerned, being a diver, being a marine park lover. She is very concerned about plastics in our natural environment, Mr. Speaker. In fact, 30% of turtles, I know you care about this, Mr. Speaker, 30% of turtles, 90% of our seabirds have ingested plastics, Mr. Speaker. It is terrible, it is shameful. And, Mr. Speaker, uh, in fact, plastic is so pervasive in our community, not just in the Labor Party, Mr. Speaker. It's so pervasive that every, on average, every New South Wales citizen is ingesting about a credit card's worth of plastic every week, Mr Speaker. Mr. Speaker. And uh, luckily, luckily for them, the New South Wales government is taking decisive action to tackle the issue of plastics. We've already rolled out the return and earn scheme, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, we've collected two billion containers since that scheme was rolled out, and that's not just the member for Borkham Hills as, uh, <laughs> In his backyard, <laughs> the scouts are raiding your bins all the time. I'm told they're making a mozza. They're making an absolute mozza, Mr. Speaker. It's the largest litter reduction program in New South Wales's history, Mr. Speaker. It's a great thing because not only are we protect our environment, we're enabling community groups to earn much needed income to support their great causes, Mr. Speaker. We've also signed up to ban the export of plastics, uh, exporting our waste overseas. Uh, that's a great thing. It's not only going to protect our global environment, but what it means is that it will catalyse the development of new recycling industries right here in New South Wales. And that's all about creating jobs and growing our economy. And I note the interjection of the member for Monero, who is keen to see uh, these facilities built in the regions. And I know there's a great opportunity in, uh, in parks in parks to do something similar, which we're working on at the moment, Mr Speaker. So these are some great things that we're already doing. But I also just want to take this opportunity to update the House about how we're developing a comprehensive plastics policy in New South Wales. And that's going to be tackling things, and I know the member for uh, Fairfield is very interested, or Lakemba is very interested in these issues. Uh, we're going to be tackling the issue of straws, of cutlery, uh, uh, takeaway containers, a whole range of things that are causing plastic pollution in New South Wales. Well, I note the interjection from the member for Port Stephens, and doesn't she wish we banned the bag a bit earlier, Mr Speaker? Doesn't she wish we banned the bag a bit earlier? But, you know, we're going to come up with a response to deal with the issue. These issues, Mr. Speaker, 
um, it is very important that we tackle plastics. And uh, that gets me to the point of the plastic bag, Mr. Speaker. It gets me to the point of the plastic bag. Because, Mr. Speaker, we know that one of the biggest causes of plastic pollution in New South Wales, indeed in Australia, is the plastic bag, Mr. Speaker. And yes, one option. One option to deal with it. Uh, well, Mr. Speaker, and I'll just expand on that, Mr. Speaker. Australians use about four billion plastic bags uh, every year. That's about 10 million plastic bags every single day. And the shameful statistic. Member North Shore. Two minutes, Strata. Well. Um, Thank you for giving me the additional two minutes I need to get to what I want to actually talk about. Uh, but Mr Speaker, Mr. Speaker uh, we know that 50 million plastic bags are ending up in our oceans and waterways every year. So we've got to, we've got to, do, uh, we've got to ban the bag. We've got to ban the bag, but Mr. Speaker, Mr Speaker, what we also need to do is encourage people to reuse and recycle the bag, Mr Speaker. To reuse and recycle the bag. And I'm delighted to see that the Labor Party has fully embraced this strategy, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, but the thing is, we thought their motivation was environmental. Mr. Speaker, it turns out it was logistical. It turns out it was all logistical. How best to carry dirty cash into Sussex Street, Mr. Speaker? Is it any wonder brown paper bags are so passe in the Labor Party, Mr. Speaker? There's a risk that they'll break. There's a risk that they'll break, Mr. Speaker. Minister, Mr. Minister, Mr. Speaker. So there are so many reasons why we need to ban the Minister, bag. would you so please resume your seat? Member for Kira. Uh, Mr. Speaker, 129. That's clearly irrelevant. Thank you. That carry on. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I know people, I'm, I'm people not, in the gallery care the, deeply the about ensuring that we're reducing plastic waste. That includes banning the bag. That also. Sorry, were you making a ruling, Mr. Speaker? I feel there's a great shortage of them in today's question time. But would you like? Are you back in? Okay. Well. Well, Mr Speaker, it's not only about banning the bag, but we've also got to encourage reuse and recycling. And I want to tell the Greens on the crossbench that our motives are pure. Our motives are pure on this. We want to make sure that we're protecting the environment, not looking after, not looking after logistical ways of getting dirty cash into Sussex Street, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, we're committed to the environment. We're going to tackle climate change. We're going to expand the footprint of our national parks. We're going to also make sure we reduce plastic pollution in New South Wales, and I'm the man to do it, Mr Speaker. Questions complete and completed.